So gaslighting is when somebody distorts your own understanding of your own reality, when they try to change your story. So for example, imagine that somebody that you trust very much, this could be your partner, mm -hmm. um, tells you, you remind them of a certain thing they said to you and they say, I didn't say that. And because you trust them, you trust that they're telling the truth. So they make you question your own reality. Mm. So this didn't happen because it actually happened. This happened because you manufactured it in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so they play mind games on you. And um, when I think of gaslighting, I think I would go through moments where I would feel like I'm completely here. I understand what's going on. And then two seconds later, I'm questioning. Is it really what happened or is it what my brain is telling me happened? And so it's, it's, mm. it's incredibly destructive for a person and it's so hard to get out of. So step number one yeah. is naming it yeah. because once you name mm -hmm. it, you, you're like, okay, now I can categorize everything that I'm going through and say, this is where it falls under. This is what needs to be done moving forward. This is, this is what I need to stop allowing to happen. This is what I need to do about it in terms of raising your voice. Um, and this is what I will do moving forward in case this arises from the same person or from other people. That's the beginning point. Mm. Um, and then you get to seek help. So I, I still see a therapist to this day, not as intensely as I saw her before, but she said, I remember when you first came here, you were just so, like there was darkness over you mm -hmm. and you were so hopeless and didn't see that you had any power within you to stop what's happening or to overcome all these powerful people who are trying to bring you down. And here you are. And the power that you had was that you shared your story. And so that's where my healing began. And at that point, I had to talk about it. And I had to understand how I got myself to a point where my whole self-worth and my whole image of who I was and understanding of who I was, was in someone's hands, mm -hmm. just one person's hands. And so there was a lot of unlearning that had to happen. And there was a lot of reflecting on my earlier years that had to happen to understand what was it that um, the making of Nejwa, the making of mm. me, of, of the me that was in a position to be so vulnerable and to be so taken advantage of. And I learned through time that to separate the fact that I had been looking for a home, I had been looking for love, and to say that just because someone took advantage of those needs and of those dreams, it doesn't mean that something was wrong with me for wanting them. We all want love, Ooh, right? <laughs> no, you just gave me the chills there. <laughs> you have to draw that barrier because you blame yourself for wanting to be loved. You blame yourself for wanting to belong. You blame yourself for wanting to be relevant to someone when you shouldn't do that. Yeah. That's the most beautiful, pure thing, to want to feel loved. And then somebody looking at you and saying, oh, she's vulnerable, I'm going to take advantage of that. And you have to separate those two things and say, actually, your choice to take advantage of my need for love is all on you. It's not my weight to carry. It's not my burden to carry. What up guys, Lisa here. Thanks so much for watching this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed, click that little button right in front of you. Click, click, click away. We release episodes every Wednesday, so be sure to get notified. Till next time, go be the hero of your own life.